of our uh, homework help video, uh, express in factorial form. What we want to do is we want to start with 12 factorial because that will give us the list 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 and so on. And then we want to divide away by the numbers we don't see. So dividing away 7 factorial. So now uh, this is you know 12 times 11 times 10 times oops, 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That's 12 factorial. 7 factorial takes over at the 7. And it's going to make sure all of these numbers here cancel out, leaving us with the, uh, the numbers multiplied that we want. Same thing is going to happen here, and this is going to become 88 times 87 times 86, but not times 85 because that cancels out. And we can just do this in our calculator. 88 times 87 times 86 is 658,416. All right, to determine if something is arithmetic, we're looking for a constant difference. So to get from 40 to 70, we plus 30. Let's see if we plus 30 again. Yes, it does work. So this is, yes, arithmetic. So we can use this formula right here to find any numbered term. We're being asked for the 52nd term. So we're going to say a sub 52 equals our first term, 40 plus our common difference 30 times not 52 but 51. If you think about it, to get to the 52nd term, because we didn't add 30 to get to the first one, we only add that 30 51 times. So 40 plus 30 times 51 is 1570. All right, uh, evaluate each arithmetic series described. So we've got first and last terms and number of terms. So if we've got first and last terms and number of terms, we can now use this formula. So what we do is we average the first and the last. So we're going to do 3 plus 57 over 2. That'll average them and then multiply by the number of numbers, so times 10. So that becomes a 60 over 2, 30 times 10, 300. All right, but in 41, we're given first term, common difference, and number of terms. So to find this one, uh, we can use this formula. Or we can use the very first formula to find um, our last term and then use the other formula. So it's, I'm going to have to copy it down. So it's n times a sub 1, no, 2a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1 all over 2. Let's see, does that look right? Okay. So let's plug in what we've got. We've got n is 9 times 2 times negative 4, so negative 8, plus 5 times n minus 1, so 9 minus 1, so 8, all over 2. That's a 40, negative 32, or positive 32 times 9 is 288 divided by 2, we get 144. And then the last one just gives you a list and then tells you how many items are in this list. So let's just figure out what our last term is. So 3 plus our common difference here is 7 times. We're only going to add it 17 times. It's always one less. So 7 times 17 plus 3 means our last term a sub 18 is 122. Let's average that with the 3. And we get 125 over 2. Do we get 122? 3 plus 7 times 17. 122. 
we average that with the three. And we multiply it by the number of terms, which is 18. That was where we were going to get a decimal. We didn't. We got 1,125. Let's just double check that for 42. 1,125. 1,125. Is that what it said? Yes. All right. Uh, for something to ge be geometric, then we need a constant multiple. So what do I multiply 2 by to get an 8? If I can't prove that out, I could do 8 divided by negative 2 to get that it's a negative 4. Or you can just look at it. It looks like we are continuing to multiply by negative 4s. So that means, yes, this is geometric, which means that we can use this formula to get the nth term. So a sub 8 equals our first term, negative 2 times our common ratio, negative four, raised to the power of seven. Again, it's always one less because you only do it seven times to get to the eighth term. So negative four to the power of seven, it's negative 16,384 times a negative two gets me 32,768. All right, um, for it to find the series, we've got to find the sum. We've got the first term, the common ratio, and the number of terms. So first term, common ratio, number of terms. That means we can use this formula. And so it's uh, a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n all over 1 minus r. And this equals 3 times 1 minus 4 to the 8th all over 1 minus 4. Sorry, you're not. Okay, and um, 1 minus 4 to the 8th is negative 65,000 times 3. It's another big number. Divided by negative 3 gets us 65,535. Let's see if that's right for 45. 65,535. Okay, good. Um, what is the fifth triangle number? So the fifth triangle number is just saying one plus, uh, not a bad spot on my board here. One plus two plus three plus four plus five. And we stop at the five because it's the fifth triangle number. I can just add that up in my calculator pretty quick to get that this is 15. But when I'm asked for the 50th triangle number, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 all the way up to 50, what I want to do is do my formula for the sum of an arithmetic sequence. And I'm going to get that this is 51 over 2, 25.5 times 50, 1,275. Fourth Fibonacci, 1, 1, 2, 3. It's a 3. You just add the two previous terms. It would keep going 5, 8, 13 if we let it keep going. And then you just keep adding the two previous terms. So 8 plus 13, 21, and so on. All right. So determine if the series converges or diverges. So we're looking to see when the R value, if the absolute value of the R value is less than or equal to 1. That's actually not even or equal to. It's just strictly less than 1. So let's look at what the R value is here. The R value here is just 0 0.5. So this converges for sure. Here the R value is uh, negative four, so this one diverges. Because the absolute value of negative four is four. Four is not less than one, so this one diverges. It's gonna become uh, bigger and bigger, further and further away from zero. It'll never converge to a single number the way this one will. All right, now that we know that something converges, we can just use a formula to find what it converges to. It's this formula here. It's actually very easy. Uh, a sub 1 over 1 minus r. So 64 over 1 minus a negative 1 half. 64 divided by 1.5, essentially, is 
42.66. So this is about that one. That keeps it as 128 over 3, but 128 divided by 3 is still 42.66. So uh, it's the same answer. Um, all right. And now we're on to our last unit. We'll take another little pause here. Break it into one more video.